Hey everybody, Dusty from Discovery Lab here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm here for Discover at Home, and this is our challenge of the week, which actually comes to us from NASA. It is a cloud cover estimator. So I'm going to walk you through some materials you might use in your creation of this challenge, as well as the six criteria that it needs in order to complete this challenge, and how to properly use your estimator once you've finished it. So what I've got right here is a printout of the six things that your cloud cover estimator needs to have. And I got this right off the NASA website. So number one, it must have a viewing opening that measures in length between 13 and 18 centimeters and have a width between 7 and 11 centimeters. Number two, it has to have a way to measure the amount of cloud cover in the sky. You can draw a grid on the plastic or you can create your own grid using string or thread. Number three, it has to have a removable lens cover in order to keep it from looking straight into the sun and hurting your eyes. Number four, it should have a list of the different types of clouds that you might find in the sky. Number five, it should also tell where in the sky, aka what location in the sky, would you find those particular clouds. And last but not least, it should be portable and easy to hold. So let's go over some of the materials you might use to create your cloud cover estimator. Remember, yours doesn't have to look like mine. Use what you can find lying around at home. So you might want to grab some cardboard if you've got some nice thick stuff from an old box, or you could use tagboard from like a cereal or cracker box, or you could also just use some construction paper as well. You're going to want to have tape or glue, whichever one you prefer, to help you put it together. You're also going to need a ruler to make sure you do get those exact measurements they wanted for our openings. You're going to need a writing utensil of some kind, pencil, marker, whatever it is. You're also going to need some scissors because we're going to be doing some cutting. And if you're going to plan on using the yarn or twine to create your grid, you're also going to need a hole punch so that way you can punch holes and thread your yarn through. And last but not least, you're probably going to want some plastic, clear plastic, whatever you've got. You could use plastic wrap or I've just got some old sheets of plastic we have laying around that I'm going to use to make mine. Whatever you've got, it'll work fine. Let's get started in building our cloud cover estimator. I'm gonna use this big sheet of cardboard right here so that way you guys can see it really well. Now remember, they want it to be a very specific size. They want it to be between 13 and 18 centimeters and then between seven and 11 centimeters. So I'm gonna take those two widest measurements. I'm gonna make it 18 centimeters by 13 centimeters. So I'm gonna lay it down grab my ruler and I'm going to draw out 13, 18, where is it? There it is. All right. 18 centimeters that way. Then I'm going to go 11 centimeters up. Then another 11 centimeters to the other side. And then last but not least, I'm going to get that last 18 centimeters to finish it up. All right, so now I've drawn in my viewing window. It's time to cut it out. All right, so now I'm going to start cutting out my viewing window. Make certain that you're very careful when cutting through thick cardboard like this. You don't want to accidentally poke through and get yourself the hand. So what I like to do is make sure my hand is all the way out of the way, and then I poke that tip in so that way then I can get started and my hand's far away and I don't end up with any accidents. So cut out your viewing window and try to be a little careful when doing this. You don't want to make it too jagged or too ragged looking, but sometimes I understand it is hard to get started there in the very beginning. If you have another way of cutting that gets you nice and straight lines and you can do it safely, you can do that as well. I just chose scissors because it's generally the safer option, a lot less likely to poke myself in the hands. Now I've got a good chunk of it out. I can go in there and I can straighten up those corners. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to get all these edges nice and clean, making certain that I'm trying to keep it within those ranges. Remember, it can't be any bigger than 18 centimeters wide and it can't be any taller than 11 centimeters. If I cut it too big, well, I just went over and I did not fulfill those requirements. So make certain you do your best to try and follow those lines stay well within those parameters. All right, one more side, I've almost got it. Whew. This is kind of a workout for me, guys. That 
last little corner off. And uh, there we go. A little rough, but that's okay. I can clean it up later and you guys can clean yours up. So now I have got my opening. Remember, it needs to be between 13 and 18 centimeters wide and it needs between 7 and 11 centimeters tall. So I've made mine 11 by 18. I did the biggest ones. Yours might be smaller or might be the same size. Next, what I need to do is I need to create a grid that I can look through. I think I'm going to use some plastic wrap. So what I'm going to do is get some nice plastic wrap out and get a piece that's going to cover right over that guy. Then I'm going to cut him off nice and even. So that way it completely covers my viewing window. Now that I've got it cut, I need to tape it down so that it doesn't move. So I'm going to grab some tape. If you guys don't have masking tape, you use scotch tape, you use packing tape, it's okay. Any tape will work as long as it's going to stick these things down well. I'm going to use a good long piece to make sure it's on there tight. I don't want my stuff to get too loose on there. Another big long piece. Get it nice and stuck on there. And then one more to get the other side. And get, try and get all those wrinkles out as best I can. All right, so there we go. I've got my viewing window right there. Now I want to make a grid so that way I can tell what percentage of the sky is covered with clouds. That's how we're going to do our estimation. So I'm going to take my ruler again and I'm going to make a grid or a bunch of squares so that way then I can measure. I'm going to try and make these all the exact same size so I do get a good estimation. So I'm going to take my ruler again and I'm going to measure. Let's see now. So I had 18 so I'm going to do it every, not every two I think. So there's one, two, one, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, 14, 16, and 18. All right, do that again on the top. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and 18. Now I'm going to do it the other way, so that way I can get both sides going that way. Now you want to do this where they are perpendicular at right angles. You don't want them kind of crooked or off to the side. You want them to have those good square angles, so that way it's a series of squares, not a series of kind of lumpy trapezoids of some kind. All right, so two, four, six, eight, ten. All right, go down here. Two, four, six, eight, and ten. Now I'm going to draw all the way across these guys to make my little grid. There. And remember, try and keep it straight. That's why I'm using a ruler whenever I draw. If I get it kind of off and it gets kind of wobbly, it's not going to be a very good estimator. I want to make certain that I'm trying to get it as straight and as even as I can, so that way I can really estimate and get a really good, really close count of the amount of cloud cover in the sky. Now you may be wondering, why do I want to know how many clouds are in the sky? What's the purpose of this? Well, believe it or not, we actually use this data for a lot of different things. Probably the one that you're most familiar with would be the weathermen, your meteorologist. Whenever they tell you the amount of cloud cover, that tells you how sunshine is going to be, or maybe it tells you the chance of rain. Clouds actually reflect back light from the sun, and they help keep us cooler. They also produce rain, snow, and other precipitation. So if you wanted to be a weatherman or if you wanted to study, study meteorology, you'd want to know about the clouds you can see. Because different clouds are created under different circumstances, each one tells us a little bit different about our atmosphere. Scientists would use that data to tell them exactly what's going on in the upper reaches of our atmosphere so they know about climate or weather patterns over a long time. All right, so 
There's my grid right there. You can see I've got it marked off into squares so that way I can estimate the amount of cloud cover. Now, the next thing I need is I need to have a cover. I'm gonna get myself just a piece of paper so that way then I don't blind myself looking at the sun. And I'm gonna put a flap of it over the top. So I'm just gonna take a big long piece of tape and tape down both corners of this guy so that way then I can Flip it up, flip it down, and therefore it stays closed whenever I don't want it to be. All right, now it's time for the hard part. I need to write down the different types of clouds and where they can be found. To do that, I'm going to go over here. Why do we need to know exactly what types of clouds that we can see and when and where? Well, if you remember, we talked a little bit about the weather, but the word that we use to describe weather over a long period of time is the climate. And you might have heard of the term climate change. Different areas of the world have different climates. That means the expected weather during a particular time of the year. For instance, we can expect it to be hotter in the summer and colder in the winter. But exactly what temperatures can we expect? Can we expect 100 degrees, 110 degrees, or can we only expect 80 degrees? Also, has this temperature or climate changed over the last year or two? Has it been the same for 100 years? So that's why we want to study and see if our climate has had changes in the last few years. If it's been changing to get hotter, changing to get cooler, we want to know exactly what's going on with our Earth. And that's why we study things like clouds in the sky. All right, so here I have an illustration of some of the different types of clouds you might see in the sky. So we have high clouds, middle clouds, and low clouds. This is going to tell you how high in the atmosphere we would find these different clouds. So you notice certain ones can be found only at certain levels, where other ones can be found at all levels, and some in two levels. So we have three basic types of clouds and many different combinations thereof. The first one I talked about is a cumulus cloud. This is a big, fluffy, cotton ball looking one. Cumulus means heap. It looks like a big pile of cotton or fluff. Then the next one is a stratus. Stratus would be layers. So the one that looks like it's a bunch of different layers or levels stacked on top of each other, that's a stratus. And then the next one I'm gonna talk about, cirrus. Cirrus means wispy. Those ones that look at the top, they look like they're just little whiskers flying through the air. Those would be our three main types, and you can see that we have different varieties of those. If we combine a stratus and a cumulus, we get one that ends up a little bit higher called a stratocumulus. See how it's got the layering at the bottom, but it still has the kind of heaped up fluffy stuff on top? Now, there's a word I'm going to use next called alto. Alto is a word that just means high or tall. So we can have alto cumulus, which is tall cumulus. They tend to be smaller because they're further away than cumulus, but they still have those puffy, puffy shapes. The next is an alto stratus. So this is a stratus cloud that you just see higher in the sky. Not down low, but a little bit more towards the middle. Now the next thing I want to talk to you about is these high cirrus clouds. So these big, thin, wispy guys up here, we can have cirrocumulus, which are kind of like smaller cumulus clouds that still look really wispy and high in the sky. And then cirrostratus. This is a combination of thin, wispy, and kind of layered looks. Now let's talk about the ones that cover more than one area. So over here we have our nimbostratus, which is a real thick, heavy, dark cloud that brings a lot of rain with it. It goes from low all the way up to middle. This one is usually what we consider a wall cloud that we would see coming in for a thunderstorm. The next one is our cumulonimbus. You see this one stretches all the way up here. So this one looks like the biggest cumulus cloud ever. Usually they are thicker and darker. If we hear this word nimbus, that usually means it's a darker cloud. So this one right here can also cause rain, but it tends to be less dark and heavy looking than our nimbostratus. So you guys want to create your own little list or make your own little illustration like this to go on to your cloud estimator. So this is going to take care of two of them actually. It's going to list all of our clouds and it's going to tell us where we can find those in the sky. All right, so now we've listed and we've told where they're going to be, I think it's about time we go out and we test 
our estimator. All right, so I've brought my cloud cover estimator and my calculator outside, and so it's time to estimate the cloud cover. So I'm gonna look up, and I noticed we've got what looks like some cumulostratus right here, as well as some lower stratus and a few cumulus clouds over here. So I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna lift up my screen. I'm gonna hold up my viewer, so that way I can see how much is covered by clouds. I've got a marker right here, so I can count the number of squares that are filled up by clouds. So, let's see now. I've got one, two, three, four. Count the ones that are mostly filled up with clouds, five and six. So, I counted up six squares that were mostly filled with clouds. So this is gonna help me estimate the total amount of cloud cover in the sky. All right, so now, it's time to do some math. So I need to know the total number of squares that I have in my estimator. So I've got 10 going across and five going up and down. So I've got five rows and 10 columns. So together, I've got 50 squares. So that's gonna be my denominator. Now I've got six squares that were full. So that means that's gonna be my numerator. So I've got six over 50. So I need to put that into my calculator and figure that out. So I'm going to turn it on and say 6 divided by 50 equals 12. That's going to give me the percentage out of 100. 12%. That means that 12% of the sky is covered by clouds today. I could do this in a couple different places and see if I'm right. Maybe it's just this patch of sky. Maybe if I test over here, I'll get a different percentage. Why don't we go try? All right, so now you guys can see what I see. We found a different spot and we're looking up at the clouds and you can see we've got different ones than we had before. It looks like we've got a couple of cumulus clouds up here. Look at how big and fluffy those guys are right there. And then they get a little bit wispy to the sides. Looks like we might have some cirrus up there too. But now we're going to be able to recalculate and see if we have a similar percentage of cloud cover as we had before. All right, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to fill in the squares that were mostly full of clouds. All right, so I've got a different number this time. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that means I have got different numbers. So my denominator is still gonna be the same, but my numerator has changed because now I have 11 filled instead of six. Remember, I still have 50 squares, so I'm gonna do 11 over 50. So let's clear this guy out. 11 divided by 50, 22%. Ah, that's a big change from 12%. That's a whole 10% increase. Now, if I wanted to be really scientific, I'd take a ton of different measurements, then I'd average those together to find the average cloud cover. So now, you can guys can see there's a lot of work that goes into figuring out how many clouds are actually in the sky. If we wanted to, we could try and figure out what this means. What does it mean for our weather coming up tomorrow and for the rest of the day? Hopefully you guys have enjoyed hanging out with us here at Discovery Lab. Tell us some of your ideas, and hopefully you guys all send in pictures of you completing our challenge for the week. I've been Mr. Dusty, and this has been our Discover at Home Challenge of the Week.